deer spend the vast majority of the time that they're alive in their beds. And if you want to harvest a mature buck, then you better be able to figure out where they bed. Because most mature bucks don't move more than perhaps 100 or 200 yards during legal hunting hours. In this video, I'm going to show you public land examples of mature buck beds confirmed. I've seen the beds and I've seen the bucks in them. I'll give you a tour of the bed and the area surrounding it. I'll put it on the map for you and then I'll explain why the buck beds in that spot. Stay tuned. While deer bed in a variety of settings and in different places within different ecosystems, mature bucks are very predictable. They almost always choose the very best, most secure bedding area, especially during the hunting months of the year. That's because they experience a lot of pressure from predators, and that includes hunters. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three different examples. One example will be in mountainous terrain in the northeastern part of the United States. A second one will be in a swampy location. And the third example of a buck bed will be in a river bottom. At this point, you may be asking, why is it important to even know where deer bed? Well, on pressured public land, which here in Pennsylvania and nearby states like New York and Michigan and Wisconsin, a mature buck may move only 50 to 200 yards during daylight hours. And so if you're not set up in that small area within their bed, you're not even in the game. You don't even have a chance to get that buck, save for maybe a couple of days during the main peak part of the rut. So if you know where their beds are, well then you have a much better chance to actually put yourself in a position to have an encounter with that animal and ultimately be able to potentially harvest it. Big bucks are almost always by themselves. Unless they're in a scrap with another buck or with a doe during the rut. So each one of these bedding examples is a legitimate confirmed spot that I've located on public land in a couple of states that has at least a three and a half year old and in most cases a four and a half year old or older buck living there. Now just because I found a bed doesn't mean the buck doesn't have other beds. But I wanna show you these examples. I'll put them on the map for you so that you can see what they look like on the topo maps and the aerial maps as well. And I'll explain why the deer are bedding in that location. In some cases, I'll explain what time of the hunting season the bucks are in that bed. And I work really, really hard to find good hunting locations on public land. It takes a ton of scouting, I've invested years to understand why deer behave the way that they do. And so the examples that I give to you in this video and the rest in this series, the videos are actual footage of the buck bed. The maps, oftentimes, but not always, will be representational of what that spot looks like on a topo or aerial map. A few years back when I belonged to a deer hunting forum, I got burnt by being a little too generous by showing some aerial pictures and people being able to match them up exactly and figure out where those bucks were bedding. So I hope that you can respect the fact that although I'm basically giving you everything but the GPS coordinates for these buck beds, everything is pretty much representational of the actual buck bed. All right. Let me show you these three examples. This is a classic buck bed setup. Again, the bed's right here in the center. See a number of twigs or small shoots that are sticking up from the ground. But he can escape any direction, but directly behind him is this big blowdown of a number of trees that gives him protection. And he beds here on a wind that blows over his back across that wood pile. It's really distinct to me looking at it here 
And it may not be quite as distinct in the video, but you can definitely see a banana shaped bed. Which indicates, in this case, that this deer beds on a, on a south wind. So what you have here is a topo map and the red X indicates where the big buck bed is. So let me give you a little orientation. This area right through here is a stream. And likewise up here is another stream. And they actually intersect down below but this area is a flat area. If you're not familiar with Tobo maps, the farther apart the contour lines are, the flatter the area. So these flat areas tend to have a lot of low growing vegetation. And part of that's because of uh, the area that's been sculpted out by the stream, but part of it is also because of the open canopy the stream creates. And these areas tend to harbor a lot of doe family groups, including fawns and even young bucks. The bigger bucks tend to stay up on these high ridge edges and they'll descend down into these valleys to eat, but it's usually well after dark. So for hunting purposes, they're not very important. Then uh, you have this mountaintop right here. And as they are in most northeastern states, this mountain is kind of flat. It's weathered. And then you have this ridge line that comes out through here. I call this a point here. And these points are money for big bucks to bet on. Now, just to give you a little bit more uh, background, if we have a straight south wind and it's blowing up over the top of this ridge, a buck will be bedded on the opposite side, on the protected side of the ridge with the wind blowing over his back and then he's watching down over uh, the terrain in front of him. And there's also thermal action that's happening throughout this entire uh, especially during the day, where you'll have uh, warming air, and almost as soon after sunup, this starts take this starts taking place, and you'll have uh, thermals that'll start pulling up the the hillside. Now, I'll make a more involved video in the future on thermals and wind and how to how deer use them. But just in short, thermals are. Uh, it's understood best by saying that hot air rises, cold air sinks. And during the day, the air temperature is warming up, so that causes the thermals to pull up the hill. And when you have sunset, then they, they switch and they start moving down the hill. And so you'll actually find it almost impossible to be able to come in on this buck from behind or in front because either the wind or the thermals will uh, blow your scent right into who, where he's bedded. So you really only have two big options from either, either side here. And let me tell you, that is no easy game to play to try to sneak in on a mature buck. And so you see why a buck beds in a location like this. It's almost ironclad for his safety. He's protected almost all sides and he's away from the drama of the doe groups down usually in the valleys. So here I've just zoomed in a little on the topo map and again this is the buck bed and this brown dot is actually the blowdown made up of trees that have been blown down in a windstorm and this would be a phenomenal location without the blowdown, but the blowdown makes it like a top-notch premier buck bed, and that's why there's a mature buck that's bedding there. I've also noticed that there are two beds down here at these orange check marks, and while I haven't seen the mature buck in those beds actually, you know, in you know live, I'm quite certain that those are also mature buck beds for this same buck for different winds when you have a, a northwest wind or a north wind. And that's the nice thing about these points 
when you have a point that sets up like this, they can pretty much set up for any wind almost always on the same elevation line or close to it and they don't have to leave the point. Now mountain bucks tend to be much more nomadic than say swamp bucks or farmland bucks. They move around a lot more but in general when they find a good point like this that's ironclad and really protected they'll stick pretty close to it you know the bulk of the time. And just to give you a little more insight there is a main trail that follows the spine of this ridge right up through here and it actually goes out to the uh, hilltop here and then it goes out these spurs as well there's one that goes out this way and then there's also a main trail that goes over here you can't see it on this map but basically if you circle up above here this is really steep terrain where the contour lines are close together and right up here it flattens out so deer will cross over this valley at the head of the valley because it's much more efficient and easy for them to do there's also a really heavy trail down along here and that certainly makes sense because you've got little benches for deer to be able to travel on just to give you a 3D version of this topo map. You can see why deer will take a path up along here and cross over to the other side of this ridge because this terrain is not very steep compared to this over here. Likewise down here is a great bench. It just tends not to have mature bucks in it. A lot of deer action in here but it tends to be lesser bucks and as I said this is a deer highway right along here so this is a prime location for a rut bed not only an everyday all year long bed but a rut bed as well because does tend to be up here on the top or down in the valleys in the flat areas where there's a lot more vegetation and uh, as they cruise through, uh, a buck is able to smell these doe bedding areas. And the scent from down below can just be drifting up on the wind or thermals. And then he has the ability to get up and go check what doe is hot because he can smell it. One of the ways you can distinctly tell where a bed is, especially if it's being used often, is you can notice the vegetation and where it grows. And the spots where it doesn't grow at all. One of the things that I like to do when I find a decent buck bed in a location that would have mature buck written all over it is to actually sit down in the bed at least this early in the season. It's May, so a long time until hunting season. I would never do this right before hunting season. But you can see what he can see. And this is important for a couple of reasons. It helps you get in the mindset of a deer, a big buck, but it also helps you pick out a tree for you to put your tree stand in or for you to set up in if you're going to stay on the ground so that he can't see you from wherever you are. So from this bed, it's slightly downhill in front of him and he can see quite a ways actually. There's no way you'd approach him from the front without him seeing you. And behind, as I indicated earlier, is a log pile made from a big blowdown and a couple of trees. Finally, I just want to show you a uh, hybrid map here. This is an aerial and a topo map in 3D. And again, you got the buck bed, you've got the blow down here. And you can see this is this area is completely wooded. So it's typical mountain terrain for a lot of the states in the northern tier of the Whitetails Range.
this is what you call a well-worn bed. We have probably eight inches of snow and that bed is almost all the way down to the dirt. It's on this little rise. It's only about two to three feet higher than the surrounding terrain. And there's swamp all around it. You notice not very far away, right there is a rub. So if we put the swamp bed on the map, it's this red X right here. And it may be difficult to see, but I'll draw the transition lines here for you. So the wood edge meets the swampy land along this orange line. And it goes the whole way out through here. And then the same up here. And I'm going to tell you, almost all of the hunters will be up in these areas. And there will be plenty of deer in these areas. But when it comes to big bucks, almost all of them will be bedded out here in this area. Somewhere beyond the transition line. Especially on public land and especially when there's been a lot of pressure. And I also want to show you, you can probably see it pretty distinctly, but this is the stream that goes through. Not a real fast flowing stream, but certainly water. And it comes up through here and then goes off the map. And that water plays a significant role in why this buck is able to bed where he is. This is not a huge swampy area here. But the buck feels secure there and even goes there in a high pressure situation because over to the north, the private land that is owned there is um, hunted by hunters that hunt only during rifle season. And they don't really leave their big um, hunting shacks. And so the buck doesn't feel any pressure there. And almost no one crosses this water area here. And the key to getting across there safely is to actually go upstream where the stream actually widens out, but it's not deep. Um, some of this stream in through here, you can actually go in over your head and you could die. So obviously I want to make sure I emphasize the fact that, you know, you've got to be safe when you go into these swamp situations. But this buck is here. And part of the reason that he's here is because there's this little bowl, or I like to call them inlets and outlets, into this swamp area. And he feels protected on all sides. It doesn't really matter which direction the wind blows. He can turn his body around on that little island of conifers, and he can see quite a distance when the cattails are blown down in late season and he's protected by those cattails when the early season takes place. So again, uh, same map, but you can see a little bit more detail. Here is the river or the stream that goes through. A lot of cattails, but also red brush and, and alders and other wet loving vegetation and over here you know is this over here is this bowl that i was talking about that's off of the high ground and right there's that little island these places take time to find but once you figure out the formula of what makes a big buck feel secure you'll start narrowing down the locations of where big bucks can potentially bed, especially if they're on public land and they've been pressured, like in a state like Pennsylvania or Michigan, um, New York. I'll be sure to make some videos in the future on big bucks and we'll, the practical reasons of why they bed in the places that they do. The purpose of this video is just to show some examples and give you some of the background 
um, as to what's going on and why the deer are bedded there. Again, you can just see here that he's got that little island to himself and most predators will not come out into that area unless we're experiencing frozen temperatures and the water freezes because there's actually water in this area not just in the stream you're not going to have anything out here with the exception of probably a black bear and a black bear is not going to catch a mature buck um, in hardly any circumstance and so you can see why a buck would want to be in this spot. You go out in here and there are less locations actually for a deer to bed. It's great cover, but it's almost always standing in water. It's that little lip, that one or two, three foot higher elevation that makes all the difference for a buck to be able to bed here. And just one final thing I wanted to point out a lot of times when you've got cattails or warm season grasses and there are actually a lot of warm season grasses in this area you'll actually be able to see deer trails from aerial images and right here is one and that makes sense because they're actually cutting across um, from you know one point to another point here and if you look closely, there are also um, some trails that, that come out through here. I find that oftentimes if you see a lot of trails, those tend to be uh, doe family groups and nighttime trails. A lot of the big buck bedding areas I mean, some of them do have trails heading to them, but a lot of them you can't see those beaten down paths unless you're in 100% cattails and that buck is going there all the time. All right, you gotta check out this bed. So there's just a tiny little ravine here And when you get a heavy rain, there's actually some water that flows down and through here. Otherwise, it's just kind of wetter ground. But on this side, there's actually this row of willows and grapevines and some red brush that is dogwoods and such. And look down in here. An incredible bet right in here. I mean that is worn down to the grass and even the dirt and the deer can actually go up this way there's a tunnel out the back door and then there's another exit right there and obviously the exit that comes out the way that we went in. That is a textbook bed, but I bet it's a buck. Earlier on that swamp mature buck bedding area, I showed you trails that you can see um, in the cattails and warm season grasses. And here they're even more distinct. You can see a trail through here. There's definitely a trail that comes along here. There's a trail over in here that circles over this way. Um, there's a faint trail that comes in, and I notice it actually stays to the side here. And part of that, I believe, is because the stream here is not very deep, and over in this section, it is deeper. Deer have no problem going through deep water. They will swim. They're excellent swimmers. But um, oftentimes, I notice they'll cross you know, in the areas where there's not as much depth to the water because they're trying to be efficient. Down in here's uh, another trail and so on and so forth as far as the trails go. 
in this example of a river bottom uh, mature buck bed, the red X obviously is the buck bed. And I believe that he's set up here because you have a narrowing of this little peninsula that comes out. And they love these locations where the river kind of winds and bends and creates these little juts of land. And I believe he's here specifically because right here is a narrow area. It's probably only about, uh, I would say, 25 yards wide. And this enables a buck especially um, to monitor what's going on as the deer and other wildlife crosses through here. A nice thing about this bed is if you have almost any wind, it is a, it's a great bed for the buck. You saw how big it was underneath that overgrowth. And he can turn around in there in any direction. So if he's got a west, west wind or a, a southwest wind or a north wind, or an east wind, which we often get east winds right before a front. He doesn't have to move his location. He can just stay right there in that spot. And all he'll do is then he'll usually turn his back to the wind. Obviously, unlike in the mountain buck bed example, thermals are not as much in play here because you don't have a lot of elevation change. This is almost entirely flat land. But that wind and then the, the site and the fact that there's not much real estate here means that the buck can be monitoring that area and really keep good tabs on what's taking place. Incidentally, when I discovered this bed, I was walking in along here scouting. The wind was out of the west and I got to about here and he stayed tight, sat tight for um, until I got pretty close to him. And you'll notice different bucks have different personalities. Some of them will jump and leave, you know, 100 yards out. Others you almost have to step on. But he actually exited over this direction, went up into this higher ground. And this is fairly deep water, but a couple hop skips and a jump, and he was across there. And it... It sounds like an elephant entering the water when you hear a buck um, jump into a stream that, you know, comes up to, you know, maybe their, their chest or even higher. Incidentally, you can see this area right here. It's kind of green compared to the rest of the area. And that's because this is a lower spot. Not much lower, but it's lower than this area out here and certainly here. Now, eventually what can happen is you'll have a breakthrough in this area right here by the stream. And if this happens uh, for long enough where it doesn't revert back to its original shape, it can erode this soil in here and then it'll begin building a bank right along here and the same here. And now you actually could have water all the way along here that is separate from the stream itself. That would actually be, this is what would then re, be referred to as an oxbow lake. A lot of people refer to it in its current condition as an oxbow, but it's not technically because it's not separated off. But Neither here nor there, both of them are excellent bedding areas for big bucks. I would say it would be even more ironclad in many ways if it became an oxbow because it would make this little island here. Again, most hunters don't enter down into these areas. They have a tendency to stay up, up on the top or way back off here and in a lot of cases, these mature bucks, they don't move very far during daylight. And so if you're not close to the bed, you're already out of the chance to have a crack at him. And so if you don't set up your tree stand or, or 
find a spot on the ground where you can uh, hide behind a blowdown or something like that, there's a good chance this buck won't move far enough to get up into the woods during hunting hours. And so you're already out of the game because you haven't set up close enough to the bed. It's definitely a high risk, high reward type of scenario because it's really hard to get in on these bucks close enough uh, to have a crack at them. Um, but if you don't attempt it, you'll probably never have a chance at them outside of a couple days during the rut. Again, I'm Daryl Meyer with Seeds to Dreams Deer, and I hope that you find more than you think that you're hunting for.